is the big O show. This is the big O show. There he is. I hope he's feeling better now. He dropped. Oh no, he's there. Okay. Fire. Ah, there he is. There he is. Well, it finally caught you, huh? It's going to catch all of us, bro. Oh, I've had it before. Oh, you I had, had it the second time yeah. getting COVID? Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. So you, you're like a uh, you're like a COVID, uh, what's it called? The lightning rod. Uh, Holy crap. I don't know, man. I think people have had it more than twice, but uh, it is what it you is. Know what? Yeah. You're, pro- you're probably right. There are probably people that thought it was a cold and didn't even check themselves out. And, and, and it was probably COVID and they just like went through it and, you know, cause it doesn't affect a lot of people. It's like Russian roulette. The, there, there are the, those few people <clears throat> that man, your DNA is not made for this. And unfortunately, although I think we've watered it down now so badly that, that I don't think it's that as strong as it was. A it's year not ago. like a, we've watered it down type of thing. It's that, you know, well, I mean, kind of, yeah. Cause I mean, with every, every vaccine and every round right. of immunity that we get, right. like, virus mutates to become a little less than, you know, it, it mutates to find its way still in to, to weave its way in the cracks. And uh, so, yeah, it's not as bad as the first time. The first time I had, it was pre vaccine. So like that, so this was just like, uh, you okay. know? Yeah. Yeah. Once you have the vaccine and, or boosted, uh, it, yeah. it's not as bad. It's not, it's definitely not as bad for most people. Obviously there are some of you out there that are super lucky and, it went through you and it did nothing. And God bless you, man. It's just unfortunately we've had a lot of people and we lost people, man. I mean, yeah. Oh like, no, I, I, it's still like it, it, it's annoying when people call it. You know, it's just the flu. It's just this. Like, no, man. Like that's ridiculous, dude. Dude, I'm I even have that. I, I don't mind. know anyone that died from the cold. And I'm 55. I've been around Earth over half a century. I don't know a damn person. Well, guess what? I already know six different people that died from COVID. Yeah, okay. it, it was. It's not something to like, you know. It's not something to under to to under respect or to disrespect to underappreciate. Like it is. Uh, I had a mild case pre-vaccine, and the mild version was still awful. Like I had it. It was. I had bad symptoms for a day and a half, and it was the worst day and a half of the year. And like not for people who have to like feel that for two weeks plus, yeah, my, my lungs still weren't back from last time. So. It's tough. <clears throat> I mean, you know, once I clear, once I, once I stop, you know, I, I can leave, I can, uh, I can leave the house. Uh, I'll get back in the gym, get my lungs back, start working out again. You know, it is, yeah. it's just, like I said, it is what it is. Like there's a, there's a rocker. I forgot which one, it, uh, Dave Navarro. He's got long COVID bro. He's had it since December, December. And it's not, it, man, it. it's, it's not a joke. It's not a joke. You know, yeah, I man. think multiple people, I'm not going to, you know, tell on anybody if they hadn't made it public, but I know multiple people on the Dolphins beat have had it in the past. Yes. And uh, so it's, uh, you know, it, it, it makes its rounds, but, you know, I'm just, I'm glad this gives me what, like six months, give or take. Yeah. So uh, should be clean for the next several. I'll be all right. I'm boosted. I got my, you know, I got my two shot, my three shots. And now you right. got some natural, and now you got some natural uh, um, yeah. immunities. So that that'll that'll be good too. That'll that'll definitely help you out, man. All right, so uh, let's go over the Tyreek Hill comments. Did you hear them? <laughs> yeah. Um, um, before we yeah, get into the Tua stuff, okay. Um, you know, I, I, did you hear the whole the whole thing? Did you hear him talk about KC and how the Devonte Adams contract kind of changed the whole negotiations, and then. You know, I, I I thought it was enlightening in a way that, like Kansas City was not willing to go that far for him, and I thought that that was, you know, I, I get it because once you pay your quarterback, it happens to almost every team, man, and except for the Rams somehow. Um, that you know, once you pay a quarterback, it's really hard to kind of overcome a lot of things sometimes. So I get that, but I thought that that part of the conversation was kind of to me that was. The most interesting part, how he talked about how Kansas City wasn't willing to go the extra mile after the Devontae Adams deal, and he like had no choice; he had to leave at that point because they didn't show him the love. I mean, it's it's a business, right? Like <clears throat> we always joke and say that you know that, that your 
for players, you're, you're a commodity, you're an asset for these for these teams. And every now and then they'll go above and beyond to financially show you how valuable you are to them. But, uh, you know, if they feel like they can play without you, then they're going to try to play without you. So uh, it, it, it is, you know, uh, obviously a lot of the conversation was centered around the, t- the comments about, you know, Mahomes and strong arm versus accuracy and this and that. And of course, like, I, I mean, let, let's let's be honest. It was, only, that was, it was, only, it was only accuracy. That's the only yeah. thing he, he, he said he had but, over him. He didn't talk but, about but, arm or athleticism or none of that because we all know Mahomes is superior in every category. I mean, he did. He said, you know, one five for going arm strength and going one five, but accuracy to all day. But it's the first that was the first episode of his podcast. Right. So, like, what better way to get it? you know, circulating and talked about then by saying something a little bit inflammatory. Like it, it's, I think he's just having his, you know, he's having his, his quarterbacks back right now. Um, I'm sure that, you know, he and Pat Mahomes have spoken about it or not because but, but the way he elaborated, it. he went a little overboard. And so by going a little overboard, it tells me that he believes what he's saying. Actually, it's not just talk. And I'll tell you why. Devontae Adams was asked the same thing about leaving Green Bay. And he had conversations with Aaron Rodgers. And he said, yeah, you know, Aaron's only going to be there maybe another year or two. And after that, and then he goes, yeah, you know, I love Jordan Love. He's a, he's a great kid. And he left it at that. He didn't say, hey, you know, I know Jordan's going to be a great quarterback. I know he's going to be fantastic. He could have done that because he's with the Raiders. So he doesn't give a shit if he blows <laughs> smoke up his ass because he can do that because he's with he's with the Raiders. Yet he didn't do that. And that's kind of an indictment on Jordan Love. And I and and in a way, when I listen to Tyreek Hill talk, I, I I agree with you wholeheartedly that normally you're gonna talk up your teammates because, dude, that's what you have to do. That's the professional thing to do, that's the right thing to do. But the way he went overboard tells me that the kid has made an impression on him that gets him excited about this season. That's what I would say to that. I, yeah, I, I think that uh, I, I think Tyreek likes playing with two. I think he's he is at a point of his. I think he's at a point of his career, and you know, financially, uh, in terms of fi- money made, in terms of accolades, in terms of championships, I think he's at a point where like you're not just gonna make him do things he doesn't want to do. You know what I'm saying? Like there are players far less accomplished than Tyreek Kill who are who already don't, you know, if you tell them, okay, talk to the media, they'll tell you, no, do this, say this, like, you, you got me messed up. So, like, I don't think that this is, like, a, a state-organized, you know, you know, media push out of Tyreek. Right. I don't think the right. people telling him, say this, say this, do this, have his back. Like, I think he's genuinely, he genuinely wants to do it if he's doing it. Um, But, yeah, I mean, he's just, He's, and, and, you know, maybe there's a, like a little bit of pride because, I mean, he clearly he does see all the tweets from Kansas City, like jaded Kansas City fans. He does see it. And so, like, maybe there is a, a, a shred, a crumb of uh, pride talking where he wants to make it clear, like, I'm happy sure, with my sure. situation. He wants people to know. So, like, maybe he's embellishing a, a bit, a little bit. But, uh, you know, ultimately we'll see. And then, you know, complaining about targets. Um, that was ridiculous. I, I think there's that more mouths to feed. I think there's more mouths to feed in Miami than there are in Kansas City. It's just that those mouths oh, yeah. are are big in Kansas City. Those right. are, uh, Kelsey and, and Hill. Those are hell of a you know hell of a mouth, hell of a mouth to feed. But there's more. There are more players deserving of the ball down in Miami. So like, I don't think he's gonna set some sort of crazy record. He set a career high in targets last year, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I don't dude, think he, he, he had enough time. Dude, he had like 160 targets, please. Give me a break, bro. So, he's fine. He's gonna, and he's not going to get that many targets here because they've got Jalen Waddle. Oh, by the way, out of that conversation, another guy that's left an impression on him was Jalen Waddle. You can tell that he likes the kid. He likes how he carries himself. He even went out of his way to say he's also cool off the field. So that tells me he's also hanging with him too off the field also. So there's some camaraderie there. And I think that's important too, because as much as Tyreek is going to make Waddle better, Waddle's also going to help Tyreek too, because both of those guys are going to scare the shit out of defenses with that speed. Yeah. And I, I don't think that 
Tyreek's going to see as much bracket coverage in in Miami as he did in Kansas City because he can't Amen. afford to he can't afford to allocate that many resources to one player in this offense. So I, I think he, he might see fewer targets, but I think he'll have one of the more efficient year of his career. And uh, but either way, man, and it, it's hard for him to be upset. He got what he wanted. He's the richest wide receiver in NFL history, and he's living in Miami. Like that's. Yeah. The, those check massive boxes for him. He's got a Super Bowl ring. Obviously, I think it matters to him, but I think that, you know, the generational wealth, I think that, you know, being happy outside of work and not having to travel to somewhere that makes you happy, I think it's, uh, I, I think it matters a lot to him. So, no, beach I, volleyball I, I, too. Beach volleyball. You know, too. <laughs> beach volleyball and Henny in South Beach, but. No, he's doing, I think he's doing well. We'll see, you know, again, it, it's just, it's just OTAs. It's just mini camp. Right. See what happens when they get to training camp. We'll see what happens when they play. I mean, that that opening stretch to start the season. You know, I know, I know, I know. We downplay it like that, and it's you're you're a thousand percent right. But I want Dolphin fans to enjoy themselves, enjoy this off season. I think the team did what you needed them to do. You know, you want them to do th something to make things happen. They did exactly what you needed on offense. Hopefully, they got the right coaches. They did great acquisitions. I want people to enjoy – I want Dolphin Nation to enjoy the acquisitions, enjoy the vibe, enjoy the fact that it looks like these players are getting along because it could be Cleveland, my brother, where you don't know what the hell is happening. You don't know what's going on with that mess. You know what I mean? So let's also be grateful that it's a good vibe going into the season. Now let me ask you one more question before I let you go. In that interview – this is the other thing that I'm kind of reading between the lines. The Dolphins don't, while Tua is the face of your franchise, he's not really yet a franchise player. He's not yet a superstar. He's not that yet, right? X is probably your biggest superstar on your team, but he's not really that vocal type leader, that guy that's going to create a vibe in the locker room. X, X leads totally on the field with his play. That's how he inspires his teammates and all of that. Cause as you know, he's a quiet and reserved guy. Okay. I think Tyreek Hill is embracing not just the contract and the respect and the, the vibe he has with Tua or with Watt or with the offense, or he likes the coaches also, obviously, but I think he really likes the fact that he gets to be the leader of the team in a way and the leader of the offense. Cause he had Andy Reid and he had Pat Mahomes and he had, Travis Kelsey with him, who he and he and Kelsey are kind of sharing the load on that side. But now he kind of walks in where he really, the cheetah gets to become a lion in a way. I think he's it's, kind of embracing that. What do you think about that? I think that there's a, I think, yeah, if you look at a situation in Kansas City, um, as long as Pat Mahomes is playing football there, you're not going to be the face of that franchise. Or even, so. or even Andy Reid, baby. Because even, McDaniel, yeah, you know, even McDaniel's not there where Andy Reid is at. Tyreek Hill is still has the high, the higher marquee right now, even than his own head coach. Where nobody's above Andy Reid because we're talking about a all of freaking yeah, so there. You have a coach who's also a big personality and a big, you know very well known. You've got Travis Kelsey, who's are you know he's a more marketable player I think than than Travis there than. Tyreek Hill, respectfully, just he's out there. He's got his own little dating show. Like he does the little dances afterward. Like, you know, people know Travis Kelsey. He breaks up with his girlfriend and it becomes a social media super story for a week. You know what I'm saying? So like it, it was hard for him to really stand out like that. Uh, but here, you know, this is a superstar. This is a starless team in, in, in the terms of, you know, actual star power, not talent, but like brand and star power. Exactly. I mean, who would you say, like, right now, I don't, who, before Nobody. Tyreek got here, who's Nobody. the that, face that, of this that, franchise? X is the superstar player, but not brand, like you just said. Right. Exactly. Yes. That's not You're his right. thing. Right. Like, you know, it doesn't have to be. I'm, this isn't a critique I, actually, of the Actually, Tua is the brand. Tua is the brand, but not the player. Yet. But Tua, don't, I don't even think Tua necessarily. Well, we'll see, because this is a new. No, no, you, you don't, you don't stir team. talk like that if you're not a brand. He's a brand. So. Right? He's you know, it, it's just like a, it, it's a it's an opportunity for him to stand out even more. It's an opportunity to let more of his personality show. And I think that's kind of what he's embracing here. It's just a it's a clean slate for him. It's a new chance. And, 
you know, it, it's a big market where people are going to pay attention and you could do a little bit more in Miami than you can in, in Kansas City. So uh, I think we're seeing them take full advantage of that. But you know, again, like everything's fun and games until you got to play the Pats, Ravens, Bills and Bengals the first weeks, first four weeks of the season. So I want to see what the energy is like after month one of, you know, come September and October, not necessarily end of June. This is when, I mean, this is dead period. We got teams, I know there's teams starting minicamp this week, the Dolphins are off. They're on summer break. So like, this is, this is, you know, mess around time. But I want to see what, I want to see what the energy is like, you know, and this isn't critically speaking, but I, I genuinely am interested what this energy is like once. All right, bro. Like, it's not this isn't funny games anymore. This isn't, you know, full full time anymore. Like it's you start off right into the fire. Best energy drink on the planet, Edge Energy Drink. Go to myedgedrink.com. Order it anywhere you're at. It'll be delivered right to your home. Go to myedgedrink.com. Only 78 calories. Delicious, smooth, and zero aftertaste. I can't say it enough. Delicious, smooth, and zero aftertaste. We should have Edge here at uh, Tortugas, man. That way, the next time we come, we'll have uh, Edge Energy Drink here. Go to myedgedrink.com. Use my code Big O, and you will get ten percent off. So use the code Big O, ten percent off. Marcel, what are you working on over at ESPN so folks and Dolphin fans can check you out? Nothing this week. I'm off this week. This is my this is my obligation right now, man. Uh, okay. Like I said, we're on we're on summer vacation. We're on summer break. So most of what I'm going to do for the next month is, you know, recapping what just happened in OTA and mini camp, previewing what to look for in training camp, digging into a couple features I've been waiting on. And uh, but for now, it's time to breathe because uh, the grind starts in about a month and a half and is going to run until February. So. And I'm trying to enjoy this last bit of peace. I'm looking forward to it. All right. Follow him on Twitter at Marcel underscore LJ. You get better, young man. Uh, drink a lot of water, get some uh, rest, and we'll uh, catch up later on in the week. Yes, sir. See you on Thursday. Thank you, sir. There you go. Marcel Louis Jacques. Remember, myedgedrink.com. Delicious, smooth, and zero aftertaste. Oh, and as an elixir, all oh, the best. Mix it with a little vodka, a little rum. Ooh, doggy. A little myedgedrink.com. You never-